It was a huge day yesterday for SpaceX, but did the rocket launch actually go as planned? Hey you, it's me, Curtis P. It's time for some coffee. So yesterday was a huge day for SpaceX as they launched their Falcon Heavy from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now Elon Musk even said going into this, there was a 50-50 chance the entire thing might or might not work. So it was a pretty interesting thing to watch because would it blow up, would it not blow up? Basically a flip of a coin at this point. But the rocket launch went off without a hitch here and it proceeded into the Earth's atmosphere. Now at the current time, this is the most powerful rocket in the entire world. It's capable of delivering about 64 tons into space all at once. Now one thing Elon's been teasing for a while here was the fact that this rocket launch would be bringing his very own Tesla Roadster into space. And along with that, of course, the passenger here was a dummy wearing the SpaceX flight suit. Now as the live stream proceeded here, we actually saw two of the rocket boosters land back on the ground in parallel, which is awesome. I can look at this footage all day. Looks amazing. Though some bad news here, the third rocket booster, which was expected to land back on the drone ship, it didn't really fare so well. According to SpaceX, it actually ran out of fuel as it was descending towards the drone ship, which resulted in it hitting the ocean at about 500 kilometers an hour so no surprise here it was kind of destroyed on impact but hey the main cargo made it into space and that's the most important part because now we can all watch a live stream of the Tesla Roadster in space as it orbits the earth now after the entire launch proceeded the actual car sort of floated around and orbited earth for a while but Late last night, it actually performed its maneuver sort of firing, which then sent it off to Mars. The downside, though, is that the secondary burn actually overperformed, so yeah, the Tesla Roadster, it's heading off to the asteroid belt instead of Mars. Elon Musk tweeting out this photo of its new trajectory, which will go way past Mars, off into the asteroid belt, so hopefully the car can actually survive all of that and make it back towards Earth, but kind of a 50-50 chance. But overall, it was a pretty interesting thing to watch live on YouTube. It was awesome and just happens to be the second biggest YouTube live stream ever with 2.3 million people around the world watching. And according to many, it was called the most anticipated rocket launch in the past decade. So pretty freaking amazing. So overall, everything looked good for the Falcon Heavy and Elon Musk in a press event even said, hey, you know what? Everything looked good. We're gonna proceed with some other Falcon Heavy launches in the near future. And hey, don't forget, there was also that space tourist, though unnamed, who wanted to buy a trip around the moon. So that's still on apparently for late 2018. So we'll just have to wait and see. This year is going to be a big one for space travel. So I can't wait. But talking about the Falcon Heavy rocket launch, did you actually watch it online live? Let me know, comment section down below. I would love to know. I was watching it while at work on YouTube. It was awesome to watch just live. I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So anyway, let me know in the comment section down below. What did you do? Did you watch it? How did you enjoy it? Stuff like that. Yeah. But from that, let's jump into some quick news for the day. Yesterday was the big day of HomePod reviews, as many of the online publications released their reviews for the new Apple Home speaker. Overall, the reviews appear to be pretty positive, though Siri, of course, still appears to be a problem on the speaker. And some publications even got a behind-the-scenes look inside of Apple, showing off the locations where they actually tested out the sound for the HomePod. And some big changes may be coming for Google's material design in the near future, as new code discovered within Google's apps actually points to a brand new Material Design 2.0 coming in the near future. Material Design itself was debuted back in 2014, so it wasn't really that long ago, but the changes themselves won't be big. Currently, it just looks like Google will be refining some of the color palettes with some darker designs, but there are some interesting new touch interactions for future products, which could be interesting. But that's just a few quick news stories for the day. To learn more about any of those topics or anything I talk about in today's show, check out the links in the description down below. Next up, The Verge got a very interesting first look at Intel's new smart glasses. The brand new glasses are able to project a small screen onto your glasses so you can actually view like notifications or anything right in front of your eye. It looks freaking awesome. And the plus side here, it doesn't have a camera built in, so you don't have to worry about people thinking you're recording them all the time. Currently, Intel plans on launching an early access developer program later in the year, and the overall hope is to have it actually work with iPhones and Androids in the future, which would be awesome. And the company is also trying to avoid what happened to Google Glass here, because they're thinking like, let's avoid that, it didn't work out too well for Google. This time, it's all about just displaying information in front of your eyes and not recording the world around. 
around you. Overall, it looks like a pretty awesome new product. I would love to have that, just to be able to see notifications in front of my eye. That would be super sweet. Though, I guess I have a smartwatch that does something similar, but you know, glasses, man, they look cool. Also, they look like regular glasses and not like some piece of technology just strapped to your face. And last for today, let's talk about iOS 11.3 three as it was released yesterday as a beta and it has some interesting new features inside of it including iMessages in the cloud, of course AR Kit got a 1.5 update, it's got those four new N emojis, but of course the big thing everyone wants to talk about it's that battery information that was finally included in the beta. So we finally get a first look at how the battery information will actually be displayed to users inside of settings and of course if your battery health isn't very good you'll even be able to turn off the sort of processing limiting that's been happening with older iPhones. So it's a big step forward because a lot of users have been complaining for a while that, hey, Apple is throttling my older phone and I want that to stop. So now you'll be able to do that. So it's pretty awesome though. A word of warning if you plan on installing the beta for yourself, certain things like Face ID don't appear to be working anymore. So it's something they're currently working on. Again, that's why it's called a beta. You know, avoid the beta if you want to use it on your regular phone. But hey, it's a good sign for the future because if you have an older phone, you think it's being throttled, this could hopefully help you out. But that's all I have for you today. So if you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit that like button. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and join the notification squad so you can stay up to date on all of the latest videos I post throughout the week. Of course, if you missed the show on Monday, you can click or tap right over there to check it out. And until Friday, everybody, I'm Curtis Parody. Have an amazing day.